Ha, I'm gonna just step back here so I can take y'all in for just a moment. Dude, I wanna do something before I really get started. When I say more, you say row, more. Row. More. Row. Ah. Mmm. Y'all already know, y'all already know the 200, 100 rule. I'm gonna give y'all 200 so that y'all can give me what? 100, that's all I'm asking for. When I say more, you say row. More. Row. More. Row. Ah, y'all, as uh, my, the host said, I'm Marquise Engel, but you affectionately know me as Brother Keith, and I am honored, honored, honored to be here with you today. Hmm. I'm excited to share with you the concept of providence and promise. And if we allow it and accept responsibility, it can be extremely transformative in our personal lives. I'll share with you a story in three parts, and it is my hope that you recognize God's providence and God's promise for you. The story begins in Cleveland, Ohio, where I was born and raised. I grew up in an extremely, extremely religious household with my stepdad being the pastor, his father being the bishop, and we were all the preacher's kids. How many preacher's kids we got? <laughs> I thought, okay, I count two, I count two. We, we know what that entails. You know that you're at the church cleaning. You know that you're at the church doing the usher board. You know that you are at the church three days out of a seven-day week calendar. You know you're at the church. I was a very active youth in our church, y'all. Uh, whether it was praise dancing or singing in the choir, I found a way to express. And I learned early that I was just a bit different. And that I, when I think about it, I remember all of the, the fellas letting me know that I was a bit different also. Uh, I had become the faggot. I had become the wimp. I had so much sugar in my tank before I even knew what identity was. So I felt the need to come out to my parents. And I did just that when I was 15 years old via text message <laughs> of, all, of all platforms. My life from that moment forward changed. Prayer became a little different because I felt unworthy, y'all. The Bible, as I knew it, became different. And I believe it was my father's use that made me believe I was an abomination that I, Marquise Engel, caused disgust and hatred, me. I know my parents loved me, y'all. However, I do feel it may have been conditional. Their teaching taught that homosexuality was immoral, and therefore it was not welcome in their home. <laughs> so I built my life outside of it. I found my self-esteem in the streets. Fortunately for me, I went to a performing arts high school, so I was able to be all of who I wanted to be, free as a bird. Uh, it was there where I learned ballroom culture. Uh, it, I learned how to vogue, what, cat, 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 cat. <laughs> I learned how to beat my face. Um, where's the good light? <laughs> I, learned, I learned everything that it meant to be gay, I guess you could say. And in my longing and in my desire to be wanted, I began to exchange pieces of my creativity for sex. I began to give of myself freely. I'm just so thankful for Providence. Because as I stand here before you now, it, it, it all sinks in, my story. I'm just thankful for providence over my life. 
And I'm thankful for the providence over your lives because life has a way of bringing you some ups and some downs. But if you remember that you are protected and that you have a promise over your life, you can do anything. I learned that providence by definition means protection or divine guidance. And I learned that promise is a declaration and assurance that something will happen. It's a second definition that I like better. It, is, it means the ground for expectation of success, improvement, and excellence. There's a promise over my life, which brings me to part two. Picture it, the summer before senior year, a friend and myself, you know, we mosey on over to the local Planned Parenthood. She needed birth control. So I said, I'll come with you. And once we get in there, I see that they're giving HIV tests for free. So I decided to take one. The test counselor pricked my finger because you need to draw blood. It wasn't the swab. And I sat down and she said, for 20 minutes, you have to wait until you get your result. In that 20 minutes, I felt as though I was being interrogated. She asked me questions about my sexual past that I did not want to acknowledge. How many partners have you had? How many people have you had unprotected sex with? Have you had syphilis? Have you had gonorrhea? Have you been here to this clinic? And the answer was yes, y'all. The answer was yes. I had been in the world. The timer rang. She looked at the test, and then she looked at me. And, and only the tone that a mother would really know. She said, young man, this test is preliminarily positive. And all that means, or what that meant, is that I needed to get further blood work done. However, I was HIV positive. and I was only 17 years old. I was 17 years old. I was black, gay, an inner city youth, and now I was HIV positive. I had become a statistic, or had I? That's the thing about choice. <laughs> I heard somewhere that our choices, they make us. What you choose to do today will affect what happens tomorrow. However, we do not have to be defined by those choices. The last and final part of the story is the now. I stand before you now. Firstly, a man. <laughs> there was a time where I felt unworthy to even claim that word. I stand before you a man I stand before you, the newly promoted program director for Up On Top After School and Summer Enrichment Program, where I get to sashay in the dough and be, model the behavior that I want to see. I can model what it looks like to be successful. I can model what improvement looks like. I can model what excellence looks like. Hey. <laughs> hmm. As of January 2018, I celebrated my year anniversary of being undetectable for HIV. And all that means is that I have adhered to my medication to the point where it is now suppressed within my body. The goal for people who are HIV positive is to get to below 48%. That is all you want, and I am below 48%, thanks to God. Come on! <laughs> I, thank you, I recently, I uh, celebrated my 27th birthday, and uh, thank you. And for the, for the people who are really great at math, you'll know that that, is, that marks my 10-year anniversary of learning that I was HIV positive. I couldn't think of a better way to spend it. My family life is better. My, my parents came out here, and I was able to host them. But now I'm able to stand before you right now under TEDx and share my story in hopes that you will be inspired to move to action. 
I pray that you reverence God's providence and promise for your lives. We're being protected, so let's fulfill the promise. And I appreciate you all, Moreau. Thank you so very much for having me. And I just want to bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.